Gentlemen, the President of the United States. Well, I want to tell all of you how much I've looked forward to having you here today. Please sit down. And uh, saluting your efforts as youth volunteers. Since our first days in office, encouraging the kind of volunteer work you do has been one of our highest priorities. Now, this doesn't stem from any pride of authorship. Be, uh, believe me, nobody in this administration thinks that we invented volunteerism. For the, from the foundation of our republic to the taming of the frontier right up to modern times and your wonderful work, volunteerism, the idea of neighbor helping neighbor has been one of the distinguishing marks of the American experience and one of the primary causes of our nation's greatness. I don't think many of us realize how very unique we are in this country. There aren't very many countries where, where it's done this way. I'm sure many of you've heard or read about the works of a Frenchman named de Tocqueville. He was very famous. He wrote remarkably accurate accounts of America back in the mid 1800s in a book called Democracy in America. He had come here especially from France to see what was the reason for this great miracle of the United States. And one of the things that truly astonished him was the extraordinary capacity that Americans have for identifying a social problem, forming a self-help group of a fraternal, religious, or charitable nature, and then pitching in to solve the problem. So voluntarism was hardly our idea. It's always been a great American tradition. But what motivated our efforts to revitalize voluntarism and stimulate private sector initiatives was the lack of emphasis put on it during much of the 1960s and 1970s. You see, back then the idea grew that government, rather than free people, working in a free economy and society, that government was somehow the principal engine of social progress. And this point of view was, of course, at great variance with the wisdom of our founding fathers who understood the danger to liberty and creativity caused by intrusive government. And sure enough, it wasn't long before the proliferation of bureaucracy began to suffocate that voluntary spirit, which had always been a hallmark of the American people. Sometimes it seemed as though a social problem couldn't be addressed without a government grant, a room full of highly paid consultants, and an office staff with lots of PhDs and impressive titles. I remember when I was governor back in California, we were one of the first to question this outlook. And at the time, we were helped by the publication of a remarkable book called Reclaiming the American Dream by Richard Cornell a book that questioned the role of big government and showed how voluntarism could work in America. But well, we adopted many of its ideas in our California administration, and we're continuing them here in Washington today. And I remember another experience from those California days that I think has meaning for all of you. It was one of those nights in the storm season, and down at Newport Beach, those homes, those beach homes all along the the uh, waterfront were being destroyed by an unusually high tide and the high waves that went with it. And they were hitting those homes and they were crumbling and being washed away into the ocean. TV was down there covering the rescue operation uh, all night long. And I remember at 2 o'clock in the morning, I was still watching the efforts of the people who were loading sandbags, sand, picking up the sand from the beach into bags and trying to build sandbag parapets there to save the homes, to break the waves. And I should men mention to those of you who may not know, it gets cold at night in California, even in the summertime. As a matter of fact, California is the only place in the world, I've often said, where you can fall asleep under a rose bush in full bloom and freeze to death. Well, anyway, watching them, there was one young fellow there, dripping wet in swimming trunks, he had to be cold, but back and forth, lugging those sandbags, building those parapets. And suddenly one of the TV reporters grabbed him and asked him if he lived in one of those houses. 
And uh, no, he didn't live down at the beach at all. And finally, the question came, well then, been working all night in just a pair of trunks, wet, cold, out there. Why? Why was he doing this? And the answer was so poignant. I think it'll sound familiar to us, but I thought at the time it ought to be put up on a billboard because he said, well, I guess it's the first time any of us, meaning young people, had ever thought we were needed. Well, I'm here to say you are needed, and there's no limit to what you can do. Perhaps many of you here saw the television special last night. It told another incredible story of what young Americans who feel needed are doing to help the less fortunate. The children of New York's public schools put their own private sector initiative together to help fight the tragic famine in Ethiopia. In a program called Children for Children, the students in every public school in New York work together to raise money for food and supplies for the sick and the starving in Africa. These American children, many of whom were from the poorest areas of New York, New York City, gave generously of their time and money to help other children in Africa. They raised over $150,000. And on Valentine's Day, an airplane loaded with grain and food supplies arrived in Africa to help save the lives of the sick and dying children in Ethiopia. I think today it's fitting to salute this heroic act of generosity by the children of New York. They, just as all of you here today, show us why we should work hard to encourage voluntary action in America. We're particularly honored to have with us each of you who has gone out and done so much to recover this great American tradition. All of you and thousands of your friends in nationwide organizations like the Scouts, 4-H, Boys and Girls Clubs, Future Farmers of America, Future Homemakers of America, Campfire, and winners of the Congressional Medal, or award, Congressional Award, I should say, all have made our country a much better place in which to live. Others of you are involved in private sector initiatives like Crime Stoppers, who steer youngsters away from trouble and towards self-reliance, junior safety officers who teach younger children about stranger danger, friend-to-friend -friend volunteers who help handicapped youth, the Red Cross Clown Corps who bring laughter and fun to those who need it so badly. In the Touch America Project, over 10,000 young people help to improve the public lands by blazing trails, stabilizing streams, and cleaning mudslide damage during the first year of operation. Pyramid Communications volunteers research, write, produce, and market their own radio and television programs. And volunteerism is a terrific way to acquire new skills. Youth with the Anacostia Unlimited skills program learns technical skills and then go on to train their peers. Volunteers for Aunt Martha's youth services donate their time and talents in alcohol and drug prevention programs and as counselors in crisis intervention. The Voluntary Action Center serves as a youth volunteer clearinghouse in Montgomery, Alabama that recruits and places hundreds of youth volunteers in a variety of positions. The Student Volunteer Work Project in New York helps disadvantaged students learn marketable skills through the special work they do. Hundreds of Magic Me volunteers brought great happiness to many elderly people in Baltimore last year. And super volunteers are springing up all over the country to spread the good news about how much fun it really is to get involved with people who need you. Your pep and energy are astounding. How am I supposed to keep up with you? I, someone once said that when you do the common things of life in an uncommon way, you'll command the attention of the world. Well, today I have some young friends here with me who exemplify that sentiment. And at this time, I would like to present to each of you with a presidential commendation for the outstanding work that you've done. Monica Perez of Washington, D.C., this fourth grader from Nativity Catholic Elementary School, conducts a summer school in her home for neighborhood children to teach them basic reading and writing skills. Lucy Theodore of Brooklyn, New York. Lucy, the daughter of Haitian immigrants, 
volunteers in her high school at a counseling center, on a local French language radio station, in a hospital in the patient screening area, and tutors students in a local college. While on vacation with her family in Haiti, she did extensive volunteer work in the poor sections with doctors. Jason Hardman of Elsinore, Utah, discovering that his rural hometown of Elsinore had no public library, 10-year-old Jason Hardman located a basement room of the town hall and stocked the shelves with over a thousand books. For the last five years, Jason has continued to run the Elsinore Library that now contains over 17,000 volumes. Ann Tweedy of Morristown, New Jersey. During Christmas of 1983, Ann Spear Trevor's campaign began in December 1983 when after seeing a TV report, he started taking blankets to street people sleeping on steam vents in downtown Philadelphia. Since that time, hundreds of volunteers have rallied around Trevor to help distribute food and clothing and to refurbish a house for the street people known as Trevor's Place. Well, congratulations to all of you. As you leave us today and grow older in this world, may, may all your dreams come true. God bless you all, and now I'm going to go down and see that you get those certificates. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I'd like to thank everybody for all their help. And I'd like to thank Mr. President for the certificate. And I'm accepting it for all the volunteers who give and do, not because they're paid to do it. And there's this one little paragraph I memorized. I am only one, but still I am one. I cannot do everything, but still I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do something that I can do. Oh, yes, I'd like to thank you for the inaugural money that you find that you to Trevor's campaign. Well, thank you. And this is oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you all again. Nancy would be here to join me in saying her thanks, but she has 17 first ladies from 17 other countries with her, and they're down in Atlanta on a youth drug program today, so she couldn't be here. God bless you all. Thank you all very much. Thank all of you. I'm just considering putting this on my desk. <laughs>